Good morning. morning. I greet you in the name of the Lord this morning. I'm excited and looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Amen. Amen. I greet those who are watching us via social media. I don't know about them and what they're doing, but I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. Amen. I bless the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, his grace. I ain't saying it just because it's a cliche. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I have found out some things, and I'm just excited. I hope today that, you know, have you ever got something you wish you could say it the way you got it? I I, I just, I said, Lord, sometimes it feels like there's just so much on the inside, you can't get it all out. So today I'm going to try to get some of it out. But I'm going to tell you, first and foremost, it's going to be mightily, or mighty important that we as a people, we want to change our thinking. Amen. Uh, you, you know, somebody said something about stinking thinking. You know, you, it, it's the way we think sometimes that hinders us from what God wants to do. In other words, see, I could say something to you, and it means one thing because I'm a man. But I could say something to you that God said, and it means something else because God said it. Uh, let, me, let me give you a, 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 an example. The, see, I could say, you know what? May God, may, um, you know, I hope you have a good day. Now you take that as a, well, okay, hope I have a good day. But then God says, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper. And be in health, even as your soul. Pro- now, wait a minute. So you could just take that as a good day. Or you could take it as God has just spoken over you that he wants you to prosper and to be in health, even as your soul. See, when do we take this personal? When is it personal to you? When is this my word? When is this my time? And see, nobody determines that but you. I was talking and uh, my daughter had shared with me. She says, you know, Daddy, they got this new Bible out now. And it puts your name in the spots. All they did is took it and made it personal. So maybe now we can understand God's really talking to us. I said, well, I've been doing that all along. It just, (laughs) you know, they, they finally caught on. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, they didn't know that? Oh, all right, you know. All right, let's get started. I, I'm just I'm trying to loosen y'all up a little bit this morning because I am ready to run. I'm telling you, I'm ready to run, I'm ready to run, I'm ready to run. All right, let's get, let's ready to go. Let's get ready to go then. Let's, let's open in a word of prayer and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you and we just honor you. Lord, you know those that are watching, you know those that are listening, you know those that are hearing. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. God, not just here. I know you're speaking beyond the four walls that we're in. I know that there are those who have ears to hear. And God, today, not only let them hear what's being said, but Lord, let them hear what you desire them to hear. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we honor you. In the matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Today, I want to talk to you about an exceedingly abundant season of increase. An exceedingly abundant season of increase. And I ain't talking about 2023. Because, see, This is what I mean when you hear something and we go, oh, okay. So we all automatically put a period where God said that ain't nothing but a comma. It's a season. A season. God determines the times and the seasons. I ain't looking at 2023. I'm looking at the season. You know, farmers, the interesting thing about farmers is it's not a date that you plant. It's a season that you plant. It's not a date that you harvest. It's a season that you harvest in. The 
Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you. No, it's, it's we. It's we. It's if we put all that we ask. If we put all that we think. If we put all our imagination, all of our requests together, God can exceed that. See what I'm saying? We, we, we read scripture, but do we really understand? Do we understand what he's saying? Boy, when I finish today, I, I, I think some of y'all are going to just have to sit down and look at this message. Just go like, he said what? Because that's what I did. I had to really look and say, God, oh my goodness. Well, I remember one time when my daughter was young and um, we took her to get her eye exam. And she had to get some glasses. And when she got her glasses, she came back. She said, that's what things look like? Yes, sir. <laughs> what am I saying? We can look at something and we see it so small until God give us spiritual glasses. And we say, that's what that look like? So, so let's, let's go. Let's go. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. So, now, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. But it's unto him be the glory. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, most people don't want to go into that depth. You know, we just want to talk about what, what, what we can do, get this exceedingly abundantly above all we ask in the thing. But whose glory is it for? Just, just setting the stage before we turn the corner a little bit. How about we come out swinging? Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. World without end. Amen. This is going, this is ongoing. I'm just trying to just, just trying to, you, you know, something's got to marinate a little bit. So everything you, you want to get all of the flavors, get them mixed up real good. Number one, let's let's talk. If we're talking about an exceedingly abundant season of increase, first thing I want to share with you is we really haven't seen what God is about to reveal. So I know when we, we, you say that to people, and it's like, yeah, okay, uh-huh. I want to give you scriptural for what I'm saying. I want to give you a scriptural context for what I'm saying. And if you could begin to apply this to, to your life, I believe it will bless you. Go with me to... Uh, Isaiah 43, verse 16, New Living Translation. Isaiah 43. Thank you. I'm stuck here. Thank you. It's already getting hot in here for me, so I'm, I'm sorry. We really haven't seen what God is about to reveal. Hear me now. Hear me now. Please, please don't, don't, don't fall off on me. We really haven't seen what God is about to reveal. Isaiah 43, verse 16, New Living Translation. He says, I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I call forth the mighty arm of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves, and they drowned. Their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. Now, may we step into the context of the scripture? God is sharing with them what he did. What he did was probably up to then Israel's mightiest testimony. Remember, we're talking about the Israel who had come out of Egypt, who had been pursued, they had been slaves for 400 years, who are now being pursued by their previous captors. 
They have no instruments of war. They are at, they are at a, an extreme disadvantage. And God reminds them, when you were at this point, I parted the waters. And I caused you to walk across on dry ground. Yes. So this was a testimony. Nobody's seen anything like that even up to now. But wait a minute. My question to you is this. What if your greatest testimony thus far is about to be trumped about what God, by what God is about to reveal? What if the greatest testimony you get, whatever your, tes- whatever your greatest testimony is right now, what if it's about to be trumped by what God is about to reveal? I, I know what you... Where are you getting that from, Pastor? Verse 18, shall we? But forget all that. That wasn't me saying that. That's what God said. So for, for you, you, thought that, you, you thought that little thing crossing the Red Sea was something. I told you I was excited already. But forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. That wasn't a man saying that. That was not a man saying that. See, we really haven't seen anything yet. All of, all of the testimonies we think we have was a setup. It's not that you don't have a testimony. He said, forget that one. You ain't seen nothing yet. See, what we have experienced is nothing compared to what's about to be revealed. See, I, I want to make sure that you understand my words. I'm not, I'm not throwing them around loosely. What's about to be revealed? I didn't say what's about to be done. What's about to be revealed? Verse 19. For I am about to do something new. He says, see, I've already begun. No, no, no. See, it's already happening. It's already happening. Oh, my goodness. He said, see, I've already begun. Do you not see it? He said, I'll make a pathway now through the wilderness. I'll create rivers in the dry wasteland. Now, let's do this in King James. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Verse 19 in King James. You know uh, Isaiah 43 and 19. You don't hear people say this all the time. He says, behold, I do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth? Shall you not know it? Shall you not know it? That word know is the Hebrew word yada, which has to do with perceiving and seeing. So he says, shall you not perceive it? Shall you not see it? He's letting us know you got to find this out by discernment. You're going to know this by experience. You're going to yada this one. You're going to experience this one. So he says, let's go on. See, it's already begun but it has to be spiritually discerned. It's got to be spiritually discerned. I know, now now here we go. See, see, don't don't worry, I'm not going to get deep. I'm going to just share with you truth. It has to be spiritually discerned. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I ain't expecting CNN to come and announce to us what God is doing, what he's revealing. I ain't expecting them to know what's happening because it's spiritually discerned. But it's something about hearing men and women of God who are hearing from the the very council and the very throne room of heaven who are declaring that something is going on. That it ain't what it looked like. That it ain't ain't the, the bad reports that you're hearing. 
that God is doing something else. See, you got to realize Israel had heard a bad report. They were between the proverbial rock and a hard place. They couldn't go backwards because the enemy was behind them. They couldn't go forward because the Red Sea was in front of them. They had no weapons, nothing but bad news on every side. But they weren't listening to CNN. There was a man of God who declared, go forward. In the midst of all that, then all of a sudden the sea begins to part. The ground dries out with a wind and they walk on dry ground. See, it, I ain't concerned about what all other reports are. That just let me know that what I'm hearing from God is for real. Because they're so contrary. First Corinthians 2 and 9 says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love. Most people read that and stop. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it eaten into the heart of man the things that God has. Wait a minute. So first off, something's been prepared. Let's, let's just take the text for what it says. Something has been prepared. I may not see it, but something has been prepared. May not look like it, but something's been prepared. Well, I feel like I'm preaching to myself. See, this is no accident. It was purposely prepared for you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought I could put your name in here because it said for those that love him. I thought it was all right to put your name in there because it said for those that love him. It ain't for everybody, but I was assuming that you loved him. Psalms 23 and 5 says this. Oh, I'm, I'm just, you know, just give me a little moment here. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I ain't waiting on them to leave. The table being prepared in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil in the presence of my enemies. You're going to make my cup run over in the presence of my enemies. You just people, oh Lord, wipe out my enemies. Move them out the way. No, just prepare the table. Let them see me sit down. Let them, let, let them see me come to the table. I got reservations. It's been prepared. I'm going to preach myself happy if nobody else. Folks, but I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us. Oh my goodness. By his spirit. See this thing is spiritually discerned. For the spirit searches all things. The deep things of God. This day and time you're going to need somebody that's hearing from God. Not all of this nonsense. Oh, well, you listen, uh, it's 2023. It's the year for you and for me. Yeah, you keep talking that nonsense. You keep rhyming your way right on in the trouble. That's all. I am trying to hear what is God saying? He said it's revealed unto us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. In other words, what was once concealed is now being revealed to us by his spirit. See, it's always prepared, but it was concealed. Now it's being revealed. Revealed to us by his spirit. The Bible says, if you have none of his spirit, you're none of his. If you ain't got his spirit, you don't belong to him. So, mildly stating it, we really ain't seen nothing yet. Let, let me keep going because I, I, I don't want to dwell there too long. Number two, what are, you, what are you waiting for? Now, an exceedingly abundant season of increase. We ain't seen nothing yet. What are you waiting for? 
What are you waiting for? I'm going to show you something in a minute, and you're going to understand what I'm saying. There's been something disturbing me lately, and I'm going to address it in my third point. But I'm saying, what are you waiting for? It's my precursor to my third point. Psalm 65 and 1. The Bible says, King James Version, to the chief musician, a psalm and song of David. Praise waiteth for thee, O God in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. What are you waiting for? Praise waiteth for thee. The psalmist is speaking about a silent expectation of divine aid. Waiting on God to do something for me. I'm waiting on divine aid. I ain't waiting on man-made assistance. I'm waiting on divine aid. I, I, it's a confidence that's placed in God and him alone. It's some things that I got tucked away that I'm asking God for that I'm waiting on divine assistance with. Some things that, you, you know... I. Oh, Holy Ghost. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, let me stop. Okay, okay. Because I'm, I'm hearing something over there, and I, I don't want to do that right now. I, 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 I'm saying, Lord, what, what are you waiting for? Angela, the SBA ain't going to do it. This, this uh-uh. Praise waiteth for thee. What God wants to do, ain't nobody going to get the glory but him. Ain't nobody going to get the glory but him. Praise waiteth for thee. There's some silent expectations that I'm waiting on some divine aid and assistance. This ain't because somebody else, well, let me see what I can do to help you out over here. See, see now, because then you, remember I told you how Abraham said, no, no, no. I ain't even taking a, a shoelace from you. Lest you say you made me rich. I'm waiting on some divine aid and assistance. Psalms 42 and 10. No, Psalms 42 and 3. He says, my tears have been my meat day and night. While they continually say unto me, where is your God? Where is your God? See, in other words, the tears of disappointment and utter despair because it's not like it used to be. If you read the rest of the text, the psalmist is saying, I remember what it was like when I used to go to the congregation of the righteous. See, there was a time where folk feared God. There was a time that you could just look at somebody and, and you look at your brothers and sisters and just rejoice in knowing that people love God with their whole heart. Folk weren't caught up in, well, what, what, what gender is this? We, 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 we weren't caught up, caught up in all of these other, what, what should we bring into church? What's, what's allowed here? And all? It was a time where people loved Jesus. Yes. That, that, you know what? Yes. Let me help you because some people may be watching me and not understand. Yes. There was a time where, well, listen, you mentioned the name of Jesus and folks didn't look at what divided them. They found out what brought them together. Yes. We weren't concerned about what color you were. We were concerned about what faith you were. See, there was a time. The psalmist is, is actually uh, lamenting that that time has passed. The psalmist is lamenting because right now they're looking at me and they're saying, where's my God? They're looking at me, seeing my surroundings and my environment and looking at the condition I constantly find myself in. And they're saying, where is your God? You so saved? Where you God? Why are you struggling like that? You so saved? Why'd that happen to you? And all you have is your tears for meat. All you could eat is the disappointment and the frustration because it just ain't changed yet. You know what he said, but it just ain't changed yet. So the tears of your disappointment, 
The utter despair of the moments that you spend lamenting over, oh, it ain't always been like this. Let, let, let me go on. Verse 10. Verse 10, the psalmist says, as with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is your God? They're taunting you, ridiculing you. Where your God at? He could do anything but fail. Look like he failed you. Taunting you. Things ain't getting no better. Oh, it don't end that old. It don't end that old. It ain't over. I, 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 can, I, can I go to verse? Can I, can I go to my point number three here? Because I told you that was my precursor. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That ain't my third point, but that would seem like a real good place for that. That seemed like a real good place for that. Number three, I want to talk about a praise that introduces or that produces, I'm sorry, a praise that produces an extremely, well, I'm, let, me, let me say this right. A praise that produces an exceedingly abundant increase. I want to talk to you about something here, and I'm going to take the next few minutes. This is really good. It took me almost 30 minutes. Okay. Because I want to share this. And what, I, what I'm about to share to you, I've always read this, and I wondered about this. Saints, but I see this now. Because I told you something troubled me. I began to see, go with me to Acts chapter 15, verse 16, a praise that produces an exceedingly abundant increase. If you want the increase, I'm going to tell you how to get this. I'm not going to leave you wondering. You're going to be able to go out of here with a complete and total understanding. But it's up to you. In Acts chapter 15, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, After this I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. So there's something that has fallen that God won't set back up. Please hear me. There is something that has fallen that God won't set back up. Verse 17. This is what happens when what is falling is set back up. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. So something has fallen that God won't set back up. You ever heard of the tabernacle of David? Most of us heard from a religious standpoint. I'm going to show you something today. And if the Holy Spirit causes this to explode in your spirit, I, I pray that it would flood your soul. That you'd never ever be the same for the rest of your life. Listen to this. The tabernacle of David is the name given to the tent that King David set up on Mount Zion in Jerusalem to house the Ark of the Covenant. So is God talking about the tent that fell that he wants to set back up? No. God ain't calling us all to walk around here with a tent. But I want you to hear this. It was the center of a new order of joyful worship which stood in sharp contrast to the solemn worship of Moses' tabernacle. In other words, there was a tabernacle of Moses, and there was a tabernacle of David. In Moses' tabernacle, that's where we really found out about the sacrifices of bulls and lambs and goats and all it is. That's where we found out about that. It was the, 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 for lack of a better way of putting this, it was the religious procession. Remember, Moses brings the law. It was the procession, the things that you had to do, the keeping of the order and all of these things. But there's another tabernacle that came after the tabernacle 
of Moses. God, why didn't God say in Acts chapter 16 that he wants to raise up the tabernacle of Moses? He said, I want to raise up the tabernacle of David. I, I'm, I'm going to share it with you because instead of sacrifices and animals, the sacrifices offered at David's tabernacle were the sacrifices of praise, joy, and thanksgiving. I'm going to show you something. Look across the body of Christ now. Look across the people that call on the name of God. Where are the sacrifices of joy? Where are the sacrifices of praise? Where are the sacrifices of thanksgiving? How is it that we could come into a service and we singing about Jesus, but people are. See, you don't miss it. You don't miss the tabernacle of David. And let me help you. The Gentiles came in because of the tabernacle of David. This is what he's saying right here in Acts chapter 16. He's saying that, listen, I'm going to draw people that don't know me. They're going to call me. I'm going to be their God. They're going to be my people. It was the Gentiles, us, the tabernacle of David. Because we didn't come in by no law. We didn't come in because we were keeping all, all, all of the law and doing all. No, no. It was because of grace. Yes. Amen. Let, let me, let, let, let me, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. So let, 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 let's look at this. So now, oftentimes, the Psalms were written by David after, so let me do it like this. The tabernacle of David existed for 40 years. During David's reign, he had the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle. So David is writing Psalms. He's writing all of the depths of his experiences coming out of the presence of God. Because when you say Ark of the Covenant, you say in God's presence. So David said, uh, let, let me just help you go all the way. The Bible says in 2 Samuel, I think it's chapter 6. Well, let me see. Let me see. Make sure I'm all right here. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Yes, we're going we to end up being there in a minute. One of the things that happened is David said, wait a minute. They left the tabernacle with the Obeidim. Now this man, he don't have the tabernacle for 90 days. And he just blessed. He don't have God's presence for 90 days. And he blessed. We got to go get the tabernacle. I know last time we messed up. I know us is dead. But we got to get that tabernacle some kind of way. Because I, I can't let these kind of blessings just exist out there and I ain't getting them. I ain't in on this. So I want you to understand what David, see this is what we're missing. We are missing this, you all. I'm telling you. Well, can I, can I be more specific? Some of y'all been missing this. Just being honest. You come in church, you all grumpy. You mad. You all been out of shape. Time for worship come, you miss it. So you think about what you got to do and what all is going on in your life, you're missing it. You, you missing it. People don't told you, well, you know, you, it, it don't take all of that. You shouldn't be, you missing it. You, you, you didn't understand what the tabernacle was about. L let me show you. Let me show you because you, you, you may just think I'm just talking. Psalms 95 and 2 says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Okay. Psalms 104. 100 and verse 4. Enter in his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Now this is what David is writing. Having the presence of God. He's telling you how to do this thing. Oh my goodness. He's giving you instructions. You want to know how to be blessed? You, you, want to, you, you want to know what, what changed the 90 days with Obeidim? Him. Okay, watch this. How is it that David is so victorious every time he goes out to battle? How is this happening? How is this man reigning for 40 years? He's telling you right here. He says, verse Psalms 141 and 2. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. In other words, listen, I know we used to burn incense. Now let it be my prayers. 
I'm moving from the religious stuff into a relationship now. It's my prayers instead of all of the incense. He says, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and then lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. See, listen, David said, listen, I'm moving from all of that other stuff. It's me now, God. It's me. I ain't, ain't, ain't no incense taking my place. Here's my prayers. Ain't no evening sacrifice going to pacify God. It's going to be, listen, it's going to be me lifting my hands. Blessing his name. See, this is what's being restored. This is what God wants to set back up. This is what he wants to come back into the house of God. Yes. Not a whole, well, you know, we, we, we got all, and I know it's going to make some folk mad, but I'm sorry. Not really. Um, because, listen, we've replaced so much stuff with traditional things that we've lost the meaning of what's going on. We just come and we do it and we say that's church. Over and over and over again. God said, no, no, no. What about joy? What about thanksgiving? What about praises to my name? See, you, that ain't replaced. See, that, that's the reality because you're doing that out of relationship. You're doing that with, I said, I know you like that. That's personal. He says, I want to restore that. I want to restore the tabernacle of David. I want to raise that back up. Let, let me show you. And think you, and, and think you, in case you think I've gone too far, let me show you some text. Second Samuel chapter six, verse 12. We need to see what does this look like? So when somebody said, well, it's the plumbing out. What's wrong with you? We need to see what does this look like? I, I, I mean, you know, for, for, for too long, man, I think we've, we've, we've tried to define stuff that God has already defined. We, we try to rewrite definitions. So uh, I, I want, let's just see what this look like. What did this? This is what the Bible, uh, this, to me, this is what the Bible means when it says the people rejoice when the righteous are in charge. I got a few minutes. Second Samuel chapter six, verse 12. Bible says that King David was told. He just don't lost other, lost his friend. He said, well, he done a good thing. He reached out and tried to stop the ark. Well, God said, don't touch it. You touched it. You could be mad, but you still dead. <laughs> then King David was told the Lord has blessed Obed Edom's household. It wasn't just Obed Edom. His household. And everything he has. Boy, I, I tell you, seem like people would want to know how you do this. Seem like folks would want to know. The Lord has blessed over Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. They weren't, they weren't wondering how did he get blessed. They knew. But how do you get what he has to where we want it? That's my problem. I can't get it here, kid. Folk dying in route. How do we get it? So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David. Is anybody else reading the last part there? Yes. New Living Translation says, with a great celebration. So why are people so down? How you come to church like that? You can enter like that. I get it. Because you just came from out there and all of that. But you leaving like that? Something wrong. Something wrong. Let, let, I, I'm, I'm, but don't keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Let, let's see now. Let's see how did David do this. The Bible says, after the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. He made sacrifices along the way. Verse 14, I'm just saying, how do we get this? You want, you, you, you want to be blessed? I'm talking about exceedingly abundant season of increase. 
And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. He's made us kings and priests. So you already got the garment. We just need you to dance. Oh, you laughing. I'm absolutely serious. Because, see, that's what I'm saying. We don't miss it. We thought that was for them. We thought, oh, well, you know, uh, dance before the Lord. Listen, watch this. Ooh, we didn't have no problem dancing before. I'll let that sink in for a minute. I'll let it sink in just for a minute. It ain't that we haven't danced before. See, we need to understand what God is saying. This is the place you get to lose yourself in him. So if we're going to love him with all our mind, all our spirit, all our soul, all our strength, all our body, when do your body get engaged? When do you engage your body? Ooh, I just love the Lord. I may raise my hand. But now, wait a minute. It's fourth and one. It's seven seconds on the clock. Your team at the goal line. I just want to know, are you going to just raise your hand? Or are you going to engage your body? Just want to know, are you on the edge of that seat because you just like sitting on the edge? Or are you silently engaging your body? See, but somebody told us, you don't have to do all that in church. But why do I see David dancing like that? Why do I see the king dancing like that? Because he has a relationship. I'm talking about the tabernacle of David. Verse 15. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord. Oh, so wait a minute. All of the people with shouts of joy and blowing of ram's horn. Where are instruments at? Where are instruments at? Why are instruments other places instead of the house of God? Oh my goodness. Amen. See, we thought it didn't belong here. We thought it belonged there. God said, no, no, no. Bring your stuff. Blow it here. This is the place you blow it. This is the place you shout. Okay. Uh -uh. I'm just telling you how to be blessed. I'm just, I'm just making sure we understand the formula. I told you it's going to be up to you. The Bible says, verse 17, they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the special tent David had prepared. We got a special place. Yes, sir. We've consecrated this place for the use of worshiping our, our God, for honoring our father. We've got the place. Look, <clears throat> and David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. This place, we make sacrifices. This is it. But watch this. When he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. Praise the Lord. This is wonderful. Watch this, though. Then he gave to every Israelite man and woman in the crowd, everybody, a loaf of bread. Okay, now, now, wait a minute. I want you to understand this is a nation. This ain't no shelter. This is a nation. He handed out bread. Matter of fact, bread, a cake of dates, a cake of raisins. Then all of the people returned to their home. They went home. See, this ain't about just you being blessed. It's about you being a blessing. I don't want you to get this twisted. But now, now we, we need to watch this whole thing because, you know, I always said kingdom increase. It's generational. They ain't just, you know, it's got to be able to do something else beyond you. The Bible says, verse 20, when David returned home to bless his own family. Okay, I'm going to take care of the people. Let me go home and bless my family. God's been good to me. It's been good to me. Let me go home and bless my family now. The Bible says, see that? Somebody got it. 
David returned home to bless his own family. Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. His wife. Girl, what's up? You don't see what God... She said, she said in disgust, the Bible says. In disgust, how distinguished the king of Israel looked today. Shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. See, this is just like the folks that look and say, why y'all dancing like that? Why are you acting like that? Why are you praising God? Why y'all shout? Why are you making all that noise in church? Why? Mikhail. He's just the Mikhail's. That's all. Just the Mikhail's. They live in the palace, but they ain't got no clue. Clueless. So, so, so David said, wait a minute. Girl, wait a minute. No, no, you want, you want, you want. Look, see, ain't this amazing? God lets us into this, this marriage conversation here. Husband and wife. David retorted to Mikhail. I was dancing before the Lord. I don't know what you thought you saw. I was dancing before the Lord who chose me above your daddy and your family. Yeah, we're we going to go there. Yeah, you, you, you acting stupid. We're going there. You chose me instead of your daddy and your family. Wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. Just want you to know that. He said he appointed me as the leader of Israel. The people of the Lord. So I celebrate. See, when are we going to say God did this? So listen, I'm going to celebrate. God did it, so I'm going to celebrate. You got a problem with it? Oh, well. Verse 22. He says, David said, you you, you think that's something? He says, yes. And I am willing to look even more foolish than this. You think this was something? Girl, that ain't nothing. Just wait a minute. Even to be humiliated in my own eyes. But those servant girls you mentioned will indeed think I'm distinguished. In other words, David said, listen, I don't care how low I have to go. I want to honor God. And the people that you think that think I'm crazy will really understand and honor me because they know what it's really all about. You just the one that's clueless. I'm almost finished. So Michal, the daughter of Saul, remained childless throughout her entire life. In other words, she was barren. But wait, now wait a minute. Let, Let me give you some context because, you know, Everybody wanted to have kids because they knew the Savior was coming through somebody. Everybody wanted to have children. She had the opportunity to be in the lineage of Christ. But the Bible says she was barren. Could it be that folk that don't know how to praise God end up being barren? Because they can't bear no fruit now. Because all they want to do is criticize. Criticize the folks that's praising him. So they end up bearing. Childless. No fruit. No legacy. Let let, let me. Okay, I'm, I'm about to finish. See, this is what's being restored. This was a sign as to how the kingdom increased when the tabernacle of David was was restored and we the Gentiles were given access. It was sacrifices of praise. It was was joy, sacrifices of joy. It was sacrifices of thanksgiving from a people who were not a people. Hosea 2 and 23 says it this way. And I will show her unto me in the earth and I will have mercy upon her that that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. I believe the harvest is coming from an exceedingly abundant season of increase. A harvest of souls into the kingdom of God because the tabernacle is being restored. 
people that are willing to praise God, who are willing to give, give God all the glory and the honor and the thanksgiving and the adoration that he deserves, who are not afraid to be literally humiliated by their actions in the sight of some other people. But say, no, I'm doing this unto the Lord. My celebration is in God. Well, don't, 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 you know, uh, after all, it is 2023, and you know, we educated now. Really? That's all that you come up with? So when you were getting that education, do you really think that every test you passed was because you knew the material? Or perhaps the Lord brought some things back to your... See, one of the things that's beautiful about David that I love about him is David, he would go out and smack them Philistines, boy, wear them slam out and come back and say, the Lord did this. He done a great victory by me. We haven't understood how to gain a victory and know it was because God did it. We have the tendency to think it came from our own hands, our own intellect, our own abilities. You, like, you, do you really think that you're connecting all the business deals that's happening in your life? Do you really think that's you and just your good reputation that's going out there and all of a sudden people are saying, I want to connect with them. Or can you say, you know, God has blessed me. He has favored me. See, that's a different attitude. And if you, if you really believe that, you're giving praise. You, if you really do it, you're giving praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, don't play with it. Either you believe it or you don't. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Glory, you've been good to me, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. He's been good to me. Glory. Hallelujah. You may not understand it. That's all right. That's all right. Hallelujah. He's been good to me. It ain't been because of my intellect. It ain't been because of who I know. Hallelujah. He's been good. And I don't have a problem saying it. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. My, my, my. Glory, glory, glory. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I praise you. Lord, I bless your name. I exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah. Too long we let our head hold down. No more. I'm going to bless him. Going to bless him while I got strength in my body. I'm going to honor him while I still can. I'm going to declare his goodness in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The righteous are bold as a lion. Lord, hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory. This is how it changes. This is what it takes. This is it right here. Don't sleep on the moment. This is it right here. Now you know what you're going to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus, you reign. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like you. Glory, glory. Lord, we're giving you the honor that's do your name, oh God. Hallelujah. No longer are we going to be restrained from giving you the praise that you're due. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. Thank you for taking the opportunity to tune in with us on today. I believe it's a tremendous blessing to be able to hear and receive from the Word of God. I want to take an opportunity also to challenge you as you move further in not just hearing, but obeying the Word of God. The Bible speaks in Romans of the fact that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. However, it doesn't stop there. It also lets us know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And then it leads us further to let us know that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. I want to give you an opportunity to meet the Savior today, an opportunity to meet Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who died for our sins, who was buried, and who was raised again from the dead. Today, you can know him personally. I want you to take this opportunity to pray with me. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I know that you are the son of the living God. And I believe that you gave your life for me. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I thank you now for saving me. Amen and amen. Listen, if you've prayed that prayer, you've just accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are now part of the family of God. Your life has been changed forever. I want to encourage you now to be a part of a Bible-believing church, somewhere where you can be fed the Word of God. The Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's important that you're hearing from God. It's important that you're growing in God's grace. I want to encourage you, find a place that you can connect with other like-minded believers and grow in the things of God. It will make all the difference in your new life as you live as unto the Lord. Also want to encourage those that may be watching now, and maybe you're already saved, maybe you're already part of a, a, a church, and you're just wanting to find somewhere where you can continue to grow in the things of God and add or supplement your faith. Thank you for taking this opportunity and allowing us to be a part of that supplement. Also, I want to say this. Some of you all may be watching and you say, well, how can I give to that ministry? How can I sow into that ministry? Well, listen, I want to encourage you to take the opportunity. We have an app that you can actually uh, download to your phone and you can give to this ministry at any time that you want to, or feel free to go to our website. You can go to our website and on our website, you will find uh, an opportunity to donate. There's a donate button, click on that button and it will further direct you into being able to give into this ministry. Listen, I believe that giving is a gain and not a loss. Jesus says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible lets us know that he increases the fruits of our righteousness. When we give, the Bible lets us know that he causes us to increase. He increases the fruits of our righteousness. It's all because God has allowed us to partake in the work that he is doing in the earth. And that is giving. That is giving of his son unto us. So when we give, we have an opportunity to imitate what God has been doing for us all along because it wasn't that we deserved it. It was that God was so good that he was giving his own son on our behalf. I pray that the message has been a blessing to you and I encourage you to come out, be a part of what we're doing. We're located at 740 North Main Street here in High Point, North Carolina. Feel free to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., or every Wednesday evening at 7.20 p.m. God bless you, and thank you again for being with us. God bless.